Hi, this is Keiko from Brooklyn Shoe Space. Today for Shoe Talks, we're inviting Wes from Music City, um, Music City, oh my goodness, I'm like, is it leather, is it boots? It's Music City Leather from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, he is on, so I'm just gonna invite him. Western boots is such a new world to me, but once I started looking and following all the makers, there's such a big world out there. And he's also on the East Coast, which I thought was interesting. Um, so here we go. Let's invite him in. I'm just, oop. It's not registering my fingers today. All right, got it. Here we go. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing good, doing good. Yeah, has the corona affected your community at all? How yeah. about your work? You know, it's affected everybody. Um, Nashville is a big tourist town. Yeah. Uh, country music and all, so it's mm -hmm. definitely affected us. Tourism is way down. Um, restaurants are at half mass. I think we're at stage two, mandated to wear masks. Mm. Um, so, you know, we're, I guess, trying to enjoy COVID life. You've been making shoes throughout the whole time, yeah? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. My, um, my shop is out of my house. So oh, great. So I haven't had to go anywhere. So, you know, I haven't been doing any measures. Um, I have, I'm going to start back next month. Uh -huh. Right now I'm doing no measures. Um, but then again, tourism's been down. A lot of people are calling in, a lot of inquiries. But, um yeah, I'm just making boots. I'm just kind of doubling up on my production. I've got a decent lead. Yeah. So it's allowing me to get my lead down some. Yeah, and, catching uh, up with all your orders. Catching yeah. up with some orders and um, trying to push out twice as many as I usually do to make up for the lost wow. income of new orders and deposits. Wow, wow. But, you know, so well, for, for people who don't know, can we just go back in a little bit and talk about what you do, where you are, how did you start boot making? I heard that you also used to be a um, carpenter or like a woodworker. Well, how, um, how did you I transition? Used to be a contractor. Yeah. Contractor, um, I built, okay. I built um, high end homes mm -hmm. and quit drinking and needed a hobby. Mm. So I've always loved shoes, especially boots. I grew up on a big cattle farm in the North Georgia mountains. Um, you know, it wasn't measured in hectares, but we had quite a few acres, had about 800 to 1,000 head. Wow. Um, always wore boots. And when I quit drinking, I needed a hobby. So mm. I started looking into different things to do. I had been a wood turner for a long time. That was my hobby, doing mm -hmm. wood work. And I wanted to find something new, and it just was like, I'm going to learn to make cowboy boots. Oh. So I started doing some research, and talked to a bunch of makers, uh, talked to mm -hmm. a bunch of great makers, um, yes. from Tex Robin to Lisa Sorrell, Carl uh -huh. Chappell, uh -huh. D.W. Frommer, all mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. um, ended up going with Dina McGuffin out uh -huh. of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh -huh. um, Dina's one of the coolest people you'll ever meet. You definitely need to interview her if you have yes. time. Um, yes. She's a really cool lady. I'm actually one the first woman to ever own a boot shop in the United States. Mm. She learned from her daddy, mm -hmm. um, L.W., who was, you know, regionally a very famous boot maker. He was mm -hmm. a part-timer, never did it full-time. Mm. So I went out there and I learned to make boots from Dina. Mm -hmm. How long back. did you stay for? Like, I uh, like stayed two weeks. Okay. okay. Which was nothing. I took pictures and notes and drove her crazy and was just like, you know, no, 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 no. Um, before I had left, I'd also read the D.W. Frommer book, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, came back, discovered the Mark Fletcher used to have a forum on custom boot making. Yeah, yeah. And I poured over that, and I read that. I befriended people. Uh -huh. I started making boots on my own for my uh -huh. wife and my family and my friends. Um, uh -huh. Ended up going back out west to Prescott learning to fit feet and refining some things too that I really felt like Paul could help me with and visited Paul Krause. Yeah. yeah. Spend some time with him. Um, you know, and that's where it came from. I made yeah. bukus boots for friends and family and 
eventually just opened up full time and gave up nice. the home building industry. Mm, wow. How long have you been doing the full time for? since 2012? <laughs> Since uh -huh. 2012, I've been a full-time bootmaker. Mm -hmm. um, so there you go. Wow. And I'm sure some people might have asked you, but does the woodworking translate into your last making, for example? You know, do, you, um, do you turn your rough, rough last uh, I don't turn last. I actually buy my last from Lisa. Sorrell. Okay. Um, I, I, and I buy um, odds and ends last here and there. I buy a new last for every client and modify it from that point, mm -hmm. grinding and adding and all mm -hmm. of that. Um, so that's how I go about that. I do think that my skill set from my past, whether it was growing up on a farm, wearing a boot every day, um, I came from a family. If you needed a trailer, you didn't go out and buy a trailer. You built a trailer. Wow, um, that's and, awesome. Yeah, and then in years of... I wasn't always building homes. I was doing the trades and worked my way up and learned it. Right. I think that helped um, math. I mean, you know, yeah. math is very important, whether yeah. people believe it or not in high school, math is very important. Um, yeah. Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. You know, um, I think that helped. The use of my hands mm -hmm. also helped. Um, mm -hmm. You know, shoemaking is so much muscle memory. Yeah. So yeah. I had good control of a knife. I had good control of my hands. I could swing a hammer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I so. took a lot. I went to college, took a lot of art classes, mm -hmm. um, never graduated, but was very close to getting a degree in art. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe mm -hmm. I should go back and do that one day, but I never have. Um, you know, I think that lends itself to it as well. So I think what makes me the decent boot maker that I am is just the past experiences yeah. and being able to bring them in to doing this specific task. Right. And if you work with intent, uh -huh. then you will excel and you will do better. Yeah. Yeah. I by no means am a master. I think a master is kind of a, you know, um, kind of a conceited term, I guess, because mm -hmm. you're always learning. Um, and I'm definitely nowhere around Lisa or Tex or Lee Miller or anybody oh. like that. You know, but I, but you have your own style. I yeah. Have my own style. Um, yeah. Some say it's very close to the 40s, 50s, 60s mm. types boots. Mm. But you can also see the Albuquerque, the New Mexico style in my boots, too, because mm -hmm. I came from Dina. And um, my patterning is Dina's patterning, Interesting. which is actually the same as D.W. Frommer's in Oregon which is all a derivative of the Blutcher style of Blutcher boot style. Pattern. Oh, interesting. Blutcher's been around forever. Uh -huh. Schmitty's running it now, um, you know, and we're all kind of similar, you know, so. Speaking of Dina, Murphy from um, Run and Hide Leather. Was yeah, asking. Murphy's been spending yeah. time with um, Yeah, Murphy she was, and me have talked. She, she was asking, what did you learn from Dina that you use in everyday boot making? Patience. Patience, patience, okay. Dina is a master of patience. Um, you know, she's got a really good head on her shoulder. She can roll with the punches. Um, you know, she, she's an excellent boot maker. She's an excellent uh -huh. person. Uh -huh. so, uh, you Great. know, I think yeah. Murphy's learning that as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. Are you in the workshop I see right now? Yes, I am. Would, it's where I spend most of my time. Would you be open to showing us? around your shop Here we go. let me turn uh, i've seen around. on your instagram how like very organized and clean it is i love your car like concrete floor uh, well it's actually the shop it's not is concrete? in my basement yeah uh -huh. the shop is in my basement so uh -huh. it's a concrete floor it's very hilly here in nashville oh. um this is my shop i keep mm -hmm. it clean because a clean shop is an easy shop to find stuff. That's my lasting bench. Mm -hmm. um, I actually traded a pair of boots for it for oh. a guy out of North Carolina. If anybody's uh -huh. ever interested, he makes a kick and lasting bench. It's kind of a DW Frommer derivative. Uh huh. Um, so there's my lasting bench. There's my Supreme. Yeah. Um, that's my little finisher, grinder. Standard grinder. My finisher. Yeah. My class 20, I don't use it much. Um, 
you know, I do some belts and stuff mm. like that. I keep all my last stuff on the wall. Mm -hmm. This is my um, downdraft. My downdraft glue station. Yeah. I actually made it myself. Wow, a cool. Fan and yeah, very perforated cool. it up yeah. so I don't get high from the fumes. Yes, um, it's very important. Yeah, five and one, uh, Skyver. There's Edith. Uh-huh, uh, Edith. Stitcher. So I um, named her after my grandmother. Ah. Uh. Thank you, so Betty. Um, <laughs> this is my top stitcher. It's a uh -huh. Cobra 55. Cobra. Mm. Yeah. Um, you, you, you don't use the fingers. I mm, feel like no. a lot of cowboy boot makers use the fingers. You know, yeah. I, um, I started with the Singer 3115, yeah, and it drove me crazy, and I didn't like it. Um, I researched other ones, ended up mm -hmm. going with this Cobra. Mm. It's a great machine. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I keep yeah. her oiled up. If you don't, uh -huh. she starts creaking and moaning, but right. she's a good machine. Great, great. Um, that is my post machine. I'll use it for ears and all that. Yeah. Um, so there we go. My leather, leathers, wow. my leathers. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I keep a decent stock. I keep yeah. ostrich. I keep ostrich and kangaroo and mm -hmm. kid skin and pig mm -hmm. skin and mm -hmm. French calf and gator. Wow, um, yeah. I keep Ooh. some boots up on yeah. the shelf. Are those for, samples? For or? samples, um, every one of them is made on my last, my wife's last, or my son's last. Uh huh. So that way you can, um, if I ever need another pair of boots, I can take those off the shelf. You know, I <laughs> yes, like yes. boots. Um, those are my patterns that I use on a uh -huh. daily basis. Uh -huh. and that's where I cut everything and design uh -huh. everything. It's a uh -huh. very small and tidy shop. Yeah, it's very clean. Yeah, so, um, I actually cleaned it this morning. So, you know, because oh. <laughs> you said you wanted a tour. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite tool out of everything? Ah, my favorite tool, um, you know, I can't say I have a favorite tool because each one has a purpose and each one does a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, I have a Marlin knife, um, left-handed lip knife. I'm left-handed. Oh, okay, wow. So There's I have a, a left-handed mm -hmm. lip knife, which I really, really love. I um, mm -hmm. use that a lot. I have a Leather Wranglers um, knife. I really like it um, for heavier cutting and that kind of stuff, too. Mm -hmm. I do most of my pattern work and my skiving and everything with a... Um, here, let me grab one of them. Sorry about that. Um, no, okay. I do most of it with an X-Acto blade, a number 11. Oh, uh -huh. But this is my favorite skiver. Wow. Um, is it a blade? What it you is. You wrap is the leather. It's, uh -huh. it's an upholstery foam blade. Oh. And I wrapped it. It's very flexible. Uh -huh. And I wrapped it in um, leather for the handle. It's a yeah. Tex, Tex Robin um, turned me on to them. And it's the best stop, skiving knife. You buy them for, you know, a dozen for 10, 15 bucks on eBay. They're for cutting the foam on upholstery and they go into um, a jigsaw basically right right and they cut the foam and they're usually eight to 12 inches long and i just break them in half, half. wow so okay. i think this is an awesome um to, an awesome knife tool um, yeah. how how fast do you go through them can it last you know, a while can you do I you sharpen give, it and i give them away i give away more than i um you know, anybody comes to visit me, I give them a knife, I give them something, you know. Um, and so I go through a decent amount of them. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I've sharpened one so much that it's kind of lost its straight edge. Okay. But, you know, they're disposable. So I think my coolest is this right here. I just got it not too long ago. It's a left-handed um, nail puller. Nail puller. Because mm -hmm. most nail pullers are right-handed, and so your teeth are on the wrong side. So you're clicking, and what happens is you end up throwing nails in your face. Mm. And I was complaining to Lisa about it, and Lisa mm -hmm. tracked them down, and she's actually got them for sale. That um, so is I think so great. Really kind of cool is a left-handed nail puller. Um, that, you know, uh, yeah. I'm really excited about my finisher still. I think it's my favorite machine right now. Mm. Because I got it right at the beginning of COVID. 
Oh wow! So, you know, um, what did you I'd do actually, before? Yeah, I had I had a Sutton 750. Oh okay. And just wore it out, put a new motor in it, and everything else. I was changing bayonets all the time, so um, I ended up getting the Supreme out of New York. Yeah. Um, those guys That's are safe. really yeah. yeah. Those boys do a really good job. Um, I like it. It's done a yeah. good job for me. It was a little different, you know, learning how to hold a boot different. Yeah. Kind of stuff. Mm, interesting. But it's a, but that's my favorite machine right now. That's so great. That's so great. What are you working on right now? Right now, what am I working on? Um, I'm about to last these today. Mm hmm. These are just the peewee with a variegated red stitch. I love this variegated red stitch, if you can mm. see it. Um, mm -hmm. This thread is so cool. Um, Graham. Graham says, there isn't near, nearly enough heckling for Wes. He's been commenting. He's been commenting. Uh, where the, the, he says that I never, you never gave me a knife, he said. Graham, you have never come to visit me. You've got to leave Texas to come east of the Mississippi River. Uh huh. <laughs> um, put the insoles and channel these this morning. Mm -hmm. Do um, you usually work on a few pairs at a time? You different know, I stages? worked on a couple of pairs at a time. Um, I just shipped off two pair of boots this morning. Mm -hmm. So there's that. I'm stitching on these right here this is a blue mm -hmm. variegated um wow. actually an old lw stitch wow that, um, P.O. stanley does a derivative of it and that uh-huh uh-huh i'm working on those um about to start cutting up some gator um wow. do a lot of client harvested mm -hmm. um gators uh -huh. for about five to ten pair a year so mm -hmm. they bring me their their hides and I'll make them a pair of boots. I'm about to start cutting those up. Nice. I've got two hides that are seven, eight feet long, I guess, uh -huh. and we're uh -huh. gonna make a full pair uh -huh. of gator boots for them. Is it on. is it a little more challenging of a material to work with? Do you kind of do a little at a time and go back to a different pair and you know bounce I, back and forth? When I finish a pair, I start a pair. Um, okay. I keep them, I keep three to five pair going like a set at a time because in Nashville, it is so humid okay. that when you wet the leather, it might take two days for it to dry all the way. Wow. But in the wintertime, like right now, but in the wintertime, it can be dry in a matter of hours. Right. Um, our humidity right now is 63% today. Wow. And I feel wow. like temperature is 108 what? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Tropical. So, but I, the outside temperature is only like a 93, 95. So wow. leather's having a hard time drying. Mm. So, so need... you, know, you move on to different things. Mm. Um, I'm good at juggling things and doing mm -hmm. this and doing that. Mm -hmm. I have ADD. Um, I, it's really hard for me to work on the same thing all day long. So keeping a couple of pair, I can, you it's know, after lunch, I, can be like, yeah, I feel like stitching a while. My back starts hurt from sitting still. I'm like, well, I'm going to last this pair. So I'll last. And I just roll it like that. Yeah. Very, very cool. Where do you get your inspiration or from who? Or is um, it I don't know if it's more of a who is it's a what. Mm -hmm. um, I believe a cowboy boot should be like a flower. That mm -hmm. it should lift up to the sun yet feel rooted. You know, mm -hmm. I see nature as my inspiration. Yeah. If you look at the tops of cowboy boots yeah. and the designs, it's floor and fauna, you know, yeah. and I think most people are drawn to that. Um, you know, I like trees. I like birds. I like butterflies. Um, mm -hmm. I like plants. Um, so a lot of my designs that I choose to use mimic those things. Yeah. So I see my inspiration is nature. Um, mm -hmm. Boot styles, I like um, the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Okay. You know, I grew up wearing acmes, loved the mm -hmm. acmes growing up. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't wear them on the farm. We wore red wing ropers because you okay. know, you're, you're not riding a lot of horses on, in a farm in Georgia. You're, you know, you're running. You're walking. Right. So right. a lower heeled boot um, mm -hmm. was what I wore mainly. Mm -hmm. But I'd see a lot of my inspiration comes from that. Mm -mm. 
So with clients, do they pick and choose from your collection that you have or, or do you, do they come with like inspiration that they want you to incorporate? I think it's a mix. Mm -hmm. um, I have some clients that come in that say my feet hurt all the damn time. I don't care what they look like. I just want a black boot, mm -hmm. you know, and they could care less what the top looks like. I have some clients that come in and they're like, you know, I wear a lot of brown boots, but I don't know what I want. And we start design and start talking and create a one of a kind boot. Mm -hmm. I have some clients that come in and they're like, you know, I want a black boot. I want that stitch design because it looks cool with that color stitch and see you later. Mm -hmm. And then I have those that come in with a whole spreadsheet of anything and everything. Inspiration, like yeah. Pinterest board. Exactly. Um, but we mm. pick it from ground up. I try mm. to, from the piping to the heel mm -hmm. to the toe, mm. about anything. Try to personalize that boot as much as possible. Mm. Even though, really, I feel like the definition of a custom boot is a boot that fits. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, yeah. That, if you look at my meme, um, that's my meme is the first thing, made to fit. The right. next is made to last. If it's not quality, it doesn't matter. Then the right. third is the design. It's design. made for you. Right. So, cool. you know, that's kind of the hierarchy of what I see. Do you have a favorite boot that you worked on that fit, like, amazingly the customers happy and the design is your favorite um you know i really really love doing one design um it's if you have jennifer june's book mm -hmm. uh, on like page four or five there's a there's a beautiful tan french cap boot with a beige inlay a bone inlay top mm -hmm. and it's lw's mm -hmm. personal boots he wore them every uh -huh. day uh -huh. um, and I, Dina gave me that design to use. And I think that's my favorite because what it's doing is it's pulling the history mm -hmm. of where I came from and who uh -huh. I came from and it's yeah. carrying it on. So uh -huh. I really like doing that one. Um, stitch designs, I've only come up with one stitch design for the most part. Mm -hmm. And you can still see derivatives of Paul Bond and some Lee yeah. Miller and you know, because there's only so much you can do with an eight by 10 space, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really like doing that one. Um, it takes a long time. It fills mm -hmm. the whole space. It's actually this one right here. It's this mm -hmm. one right here. It's my favorite stitch yeah. design I do because um, uh -huh. I like a shorter top for myself. Yeah, I was asking. Yeah, I love ask. a peewee. Yeah. Um, sure. You call you it know. a peewee? Yeah, the anything short, short under one? 12 inches is peewee. <laughs> and do you wear it under your your pants or over it? Do you tuck your pants in? No, I am oh. not a pants tucker. Okay, I am not a pants um, tucker. Um, I can be if I'm lazy in the morning. Um, you know, I slide on my boots. I come down to my shop, um, and they'll sometimes they'll stay tucked in all day. If I'm outside working or I'm on um, the farm or anything like that, you know, I'll tuck. But if I'm going out to dinner, I'm not a tucker. Uh-huh. And you usually wear the short ones. I do. I've you. got... Just easier? Well, I've got 19 pair of boots I rotate. Wow. Wow. So That's I've great. got one reason why I'm a boot maker. Um, well, you know, there's shoemakers with no shoes. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> different. Saying. I have lots of boots. And they range from an 8-inch top. I even do the side... I have a pair of side zippers. Okay. Um, so, you know, that I wear up to a 14 inch top. I got mm -hmm. short little legs. I can't get any up taller than a 14 inch <laughs> top. But I prefer a peewee. It's hotter than three hills in Nashville. And so a mm -hmm. peewee is a lot more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Oh, super cool. Do you have like a signature stitch or something that you put in? That, other? That would be this one. That's this one. That's a, okay, stitch. cool. How or I, like a, like a, what's it called? Like a maker's mark, you know, like a logo. I put, um, do I have, have a, is it on these? It's not on these. Um, let's see if it's on the ones I got. I don't usually, I put them on sometimes. I've got an ear tag I use. Um, and that's it. I'll sign the boot as well. Um, and I on sign the, the heel in, inside or the outside? I actually sign it on the heel pad. Okay. So that way, when people bring me the boots back, I can look at them and say, hey, I made these in this time. They're very good. They're not, and I don't have to pull out the file. Right. You know, and then I can replace it 
mm -hmm. know, and that kind of stuff and keep it going as far as that goes. Yeah, yeah. Graham says, can we get a shop tour? Not sure if I missed it. Yes, you missed it. Go back and see it later. <laughs> Sorry about you. Love Sorry Graham. about it. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's cool that you, you know, you put history into your design so that you kind of see the lineage and then, well, you know, in the, you know, in the future designs, too. Yeah. One of my designs I use is an old higher design. Mm. Lee um, actually sent it to me, and I've actually got it on my feet right now. It's a higher design that mm. I think is beautiful, and it kind of lends to the way I stitch. Yeah. So, um, you know, I really like that. I use um, the design from, I use the design from, um, that I showed you earlier from LW. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a design I use that, um, Dina, you does it as an inlay. Yeah. Um, and I'll show you those boots if you want me to. But yes, I do please. It, but I do it as a stitch design. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Let me move around. Let me move around. Look, Graham. Take a look, Graham. <laughs> All right. This, Dina made me these boots. Wow. This design mm -hmm. came from a dude out of Albuquerque. All I know yeah. is his name was Pee Wee. Pee-wee, okay. Pee-wee, and he and LW got it from him. Mm. I do it as a nice stitch a design. Stitch. Mm -hmm. I do it as a stitch. So it's really kind of cool. Um, you know, this is an old Dan Post design that I had on a pair of sea turtle boots huh. that I had when I was a teenager in the uh -huh. 80s. So I've Kind of didn't, and I don't use anything or stitch design that anybody else uses, and try not to. I feel like we all try to do our own thing. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's got a fern stitch, you know, or an eagle stitch. Mm -hmm. so, and it, like I said, there's only so much you can do, but um, if you do do one that somebody else is doing, or you do do one that's another one, you still want to make it your own. Mm -hmm. You know, you. You don't want to copy people straight out. No, no. Yeah, that's, I mean, the whole t boot top, it really is like artwork, you know? Yeah, it's you really, art. Yeah, that's yeah definitely. Boot, definitely. You know, that's the flair. That's the, definitely the flair that sometimes like the bespoke traditional shoemaking doesn't have. This is like oh, the fun, fun part. <laughs> it is a fun part. Um, everything of the boot, though, has a purpose. Yeah. Um, it is a tool. Mm. And... Most of my clients, though, aren't cowboys. Mm -hmm. I do have them in Texas on um, mm. on horseback. I've got them in Colorado. There's a mm -hmm. lot of um, actual working cowboys wearing my boots. Mm. But the majority of them are, you know, office workers, CEOs, yeah. CFOs, um, that kind of stuff. A lot of factory workers wear my mm. boots. They don't mm. have to wear a steel toe because they fit, they last, and they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. that's so great yeah and that gives them the option to get fancy on the top and still hide it if they would like to right exactly yeah what's your favorite material to work with um for top work i like kangaroo mm -hmm. um it's kind of hard to get really good kangaroo now um mm -hmm. but there's still some decent out there i like it it skies so good for yeah um, i'd have to say it's my favorite yeah. My favorite bottom that I like to wear is ostrich. Mm -hmm. I think ostrich is, it, it's tougher than most people believe, and it's really comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I really like to work with ostrich. I like working with gator, uh, yeah. bull hide, you know, water yeah. buffalo. Wow. You know, it's really whatever the client wants, wow. um, mm -hmm. you know, and it's either or, you know. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and uh, Lee is asking, Lee Miller is asking, what do you like about making boots? So similar question, what's the process, which part of the process do you like as well? Um, I think my favorite part is the most nerve wracking part. I really, I'm an, I wouldn't call myself an adrenaline junkie. I'm not one to go jump out of a plane <laughs> or anything like that. Uh -huh. um, but I like that feeling of nervousness that mm. I get right before a client puts the boots on because you know if, if they don't fit then you've completely messed up are they happy with it do they like the way it looks i like i like that adrenaline of mm -hmm. it. um i'd have to say that's my favorite part mm -hmm. is the expectation and hope 
of a satisfied client. Mm, that's so good. Cool. Um, what about process? What part of each of the process do you like? You know, I used to love top stitching um, mm -hmm. and I worked really hard to become a good top stitcher. I've still got a ways to go. Um, so that used to be my favorite part. Mm -hmm. I would have to say now um, my favorite part is working on the shank um, oh. of, of the bottom of the boot. Uh -huh. We try to get it just really clean and pretty because the way we the way we curve it up under on there and, and, and getting those pegs in there perfectly and, and just making that beautiful just that beautiful bottom is really hard to do, especially with the um sole leather of today. As we know the sole leather of today is not as good as it used to be. Mm -hmm. Um so I think that's my favorite part. Um, and do, do you, making those. And when do you think the switch happens? You know, I can't say because I've only been doing it since 2012. Um, I hear stories of lore from the old guys talking about soul leather that was just a pleasure to work with and shined up and all. Um, you know, I, my friend Brian Thomas mm -hmm. makes one of the best bottoms I've ever seen in the boot making world. Uh -huh. um, I try to strive to one day hopefully look like his bottoms. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Lee, Lee Miller, man, yeah. does an incredible yeah. bottom. Lee yeah. makes an incredible boot. Yeah. You know? So when I grow up, I want to be like him. Yeah, yeah. That's so great to look forward to. The, um, what about the shanks? Do you, some, I heard from some people, depends on the person, um, the maker. Some people use pre made ones. Do you make your own shanks out of nails? I use a nail. Yeah. I use a, I use a forty penny nail most of the time. If it's a size fifteen boot, of course I'm gonna make bigger. Um, if you're a ninety pound woman, I'll drop down to probably a thirty penny to keep it a little lighter. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do the nail. I use, I don't use a spring shank or anything like that. I use mm -hmm. a nail. If you're gonna wear a pair of boots and you're climbing fences and you're riding in stirrups, yeah. If you've got a spring shank or you've got a plastic shank, there's a dang good chance it's gonna yeah. break. Yeah. And I don't want you bringing my boot back to me with a broken shank because I didn't <laughs> yeah. do my job right. Right, right. Very, very cool. Um, what's your favorite thing about like having your own shop and the brand and the company? And what's your least um, favorite? God, I've worked for myself since early 2000. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I've always worked for myself. It seems like forever. So there wasn't a big change with that. Um, I like making things. I'm very good at assembly and disassembly. So building house was the same thing. Um, I do like the proximity of my shop. I can yeah. come in my pajamas if I wanted to or my flip flops and I can right. make boots. Yeah. I can come and go as I please. I love uh -huh. to fish. Yeah. So, you know, tomorrow morning, if it's not going to be too hot, me and my wife might get up and grab the boat and go fish for a while. Mm -mm -mm. So, you know, it allows, flexibility. Me, it allows yeah. me flexibility to do what I want. Um, mm -hmm. It gives me a sense of satisfaction at the mm -hmm. end of the day that mm -hmm. I have something tangible. Yeah. Um, yeah. I need tangibility and accountability. Mm -hmm. um, if I was an accountant where I was punching numbers, I'd definitely get sidetracked and I wouldn't be that great of an employee. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, so I think, um, um, I think that sounds. But you're super disciplined to keep at it every single day, you know, so that that's hats off to all the makers. I really do yeah. think when you well, work you for yourself, be, sometimes yeah. how, what do you do if you have a day that you just don't feel like making? I go to work. You, don't you go to like work. It, you go to work because mm -hmm. Um, you know, my child just graduated college. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, well, yes. that must have been hard a little bit with COVID. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, his last couple of weeks were online, so it wasn't that yeah. big of a deal. He's in a band. Um, they were fixing to go on tour, all these things oh. were fixing to happen for him. Wow. And that's kind of been pushed to the wayside. Um, mm. So the drive of feeding my child is waning. Um, but the intent of making a better boot yeah. is still is still in me. Um, I feel like you should always strive to be better and do Every, better. 
every pair. Yeah. Every yeah. pair. Um, yeah. Because if you can't become complacent, yeah. then your product is yeah. complacency. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. If you had all the resources and the time in the world, what kind of boot would you make? And for who would it be? I would make for what I'm making now. Um, and I would make for whoever wants to buy my boot. Um, you know, I don't care who wears my boots. I've got famous country stars wearing my boots. Mm -hmm. um, I've got CEOs of some of the largest companies in the nation wearing my boots. I've got guys who have saved their whole life to go gator hunting and, you know, are paying way more than they need to for a pair of boots. It doesn't really matter to me about who's going to wear them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just making those people happy and striving for that. That's what's important. So I would keep making boots. I'd make more peewees. Um, I don't mind making the side zipper. You know, okay, yeah, yeah, I like making that. the side zipper. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. It's a different patterning process, the uh -huh. way it does the counter in and all. So it breaks up the monotony, I guess, of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I just keep making what I'm making and hopefully get better and better and better. Very, very cool. Do you think your son would join you in the company? No, no. no. My son, um, no? he's a musician. Yeah, um, you told the criticals, me. The criticals, yeah. go check them out. The, They're the critical. Uh -huh. um, he'll stay with that. Yes, he loves style. Yes, he loves boots. Uh, the green boots that you posted I, on your live story, uh -huh. those are a pair of his. Ooh, those are hot. He likes those kind of boots. Um, you know, so That's I don't see cool. him doing it. Um, one day, somebody will walk through my door that has, you can see it in their eyes that they're willing to put in the time, put in the effort to become a boot maker. And hopefully by that point, I will have figured out enough where I don't look like a fool when I'm trying to teach them how to do it. Um, so I think one day I'll have an apprentice. I don't. Uh -huh. It's just me and my dog. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, one yeah. day I'll pass it on if I don't yeah. die of the COVID first. <laughs> yes, please stay healthy. But I feel like yes, you have the knowledge. You it's it's experience that you've been you know acc accumulating. I feel like it'll be so nice to have somebody come oh, yeah. sh it shadow you. Some, you know, in Texas, everybody wants to be a bootmaker. Right. Um, every everybody wears boots. Mm -hmm. It's a different story here in Nashville. Mm. Um, even the country How stars. So? Well, yeah. country stars really aren't mm -hmm. wearing boots too right. much. The ones that are, are wearing Lucases and right. Harriet's and all of that. Um, mm. You know, they're getting paid by those large scale manufacturers. Mm. Um, well, there's a decent amount, but it's not as strong. Mm. So it's more unknown. Um, mm. I get about a call a month from mm -hmm. the army base up north of town from guys uh -huh. getting, up. they're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to be a bootmaker. Okay. And so, you know, I kind of talk to them. I'm like, well, do you have this much money to spend on machinery? Do you have a rich spouse that'll support you while you <laughs> yes. learn to do this? Yes. You know, so, I mean, you know, I lay it on the line. And, you know, uh -huh. what is the reality? I mean, mm -hmm. most of the people watching right now are bootmakers or shoemakers. Yeah. The reality is, is you're not going to get rich quick. No. And it's going to be defeating in so many ways yeah. that you have to pick up your pick yourself up and fix it and yeah. make it better and Just keep it's, not, it. it's not for everybody right you know? it's not I for agree. everybody mm -hmm. um cutting your finger and watching blood pour out on the floor <laughs> is not for everybody no you know? <laughs> taking the hide off your hand on us on this finisher is not for everybody no, no. You know? so it's but I think there will be somebody one day. I That's, hope there is. Yeah, I, I think there, there are. Is. There are a lot of people who are interested. They just don't know where to go sometimes. Uh, yeah. So, Well, yeah. there's some good teachers out there. Oh, yeah. Who, yeah. who will teach you. But yes. I, if I had it to do all over again, I probably wouldn't have gone to college. Um, I wouldn't have built houses. I would have discovered it in my late teens and moved to Texas and sat beside some old school boot makers for about 10 years. That would you know, be, yeah. If I could do it all over again. Right. Um, 
But I feel very blessed with the people who have shared their knowledge. Oh, Lee, the way. Lisa, yeah. um, Brian Thomas, Dustin Lau. Um, mm. There's so many of them out there that have, mm -hmm. you know, Paul, who have shared. Paul knowledge, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and it's, I think it's really kind of cool. Yes. Yes, it is very cool. Do you, where do you think you want to be in like, say, five to 10 years? Now that your I, son has, years, yeah. Uh, I want to still be making boots. Mm -hmm. Would um, you have like a retail location? No, no, no. no, I don't care about retail. Um, I don't care about becoming the biggest and the baddest and the coolest boot maker or having the greatest shop around. Um, you have a, quite a cool shop, but yeah. Well, yeah, but I, you know, <laughs> I'm saying I don't want six boot makers because now okay. I'm a glorified babysitter again. Mm -hmm. Um, I see myself still making boots. Um, hopefully in five years, the economy will be back yeah. um, where we can make boots and people can afford our products yeah. because if you're not a cowboy, basically it's a luxury item. Right. You know, it's liquidatable. Cowboy cash. Is a necessity. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a couple thousand dollars I'm willing to burn for a pair of boots. You know, um, and then once they get that first pair, you know, it's always the second pair, the third pair. That's your goal. Um, so, yeah, I hope in five to ten years I'm still making boots. Yeah. I don't know if I'll still be in Nashville. Um, mm. Nashville's been great to me. I moved mm -hmm. here when my wife got pregnant from Athens, Georgia. Mm -hmm. We were living down there and just partying and having fun and being free and <laughs> I was driving a forklift for a living, you know, doing my art, uh -huh. hanging out. So, uh -huh. you know, I could see us moving out west, maybe. Oh, um, we love yeah. going out west. We spend mm -hmm. a lot of time out there fishing and hiking and all mm -hmm. of that. Um, mm -hmm. But who knows? Who you knows? Know, okay. I'm where I am right now. Nashville's a great place. Do customers visit you to measure? Do you always do this in person or do you do I, like a phone? Do um, mm -hmm. I, if you want a pair of boots that I guarantee the fit, you have to come to my shop and get measured. Mm -hmm. um, or you have to fly me to wherever you want to be or for me to measure you. Um, if I'm out in Colorado, like we're going to, we're going to be in Colorado next month. If there's anybody out there that wants a pair, I bring my measuring kit, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll measure you up there. Um, but yeah, I, I've tried doing over the phone um, measures and pattern work and all of that. And it somewhat works. I'm working on and thinking about a measuring kit. Um, because yeah, with of, the COVID. Well, with the COVID, oh, that was a yeah. hot, hot spot. Um, right. You know, I'm not scared of COVID, but I respect it. Yeah. Yes, it is a virus and it's a new virus. Um, yeah. The COVID-19 is, Corona's been around forever. Anybody that's right. out on a farm, knows you give your cows corona yeah. vaccines mm. you know they've been around forever right uh, longer than the humans have mm. so i'm working on that if things don't get better um mm -hmm. to be able to help some of my clients out that want boots to keep that income going and to flip-flop it around mm -hmm. but my hope is is that we as a country get our heads out of our butt and quit worrying yeah. about the left side and the right side <laughs> right and fix all this crap so that yeah. we can go back to the people that are being successful can continue being successful. And the ones who are not successful, how do we bring them up to success? And yeah. so we can all live a healthy, good lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, I agree. That's, yeah. Okay. And if that doesn't work out, then hopefully I'll have a measuring kit made to get by then and I'll just ship them out. All right. Well, that's, that's another option too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That sounds good. What, um, have you made your wife many pairs? Does oh, she wear your boots all the time? Sandra, I'd say six of those pairs on the shelf I've made for my wife. Um, she's probably got four or five pair in her closet. Mm -hmm. She only wears two pair. She wears a pair of full pythons and a pair full of, python. yeah, a pair of black baby gator bottoms with a black smooth ostrich top, no stitching. Nice. Wow. She's not really 
cowboy flash, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, she doesn't, she loves the comfort of them. She loves the style of them. She loves the fact that I made them. Yeah. But um, my wife wears heels, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. she's a, um, she's in the corporate world. And uh -huh. so she wears heels for the most part in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. She wears my boots a lot and she's got lots to wear, but she really only wears one or two pair. And are those the ones with the zip too? Like a little uh, narrower? She wears those zippers. Yeah. Um, she, my son wears nothing but zippers. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a couple of pair that aren't, but you know, he wears skinny jeans. Yeah, yeah. So he wears zippers. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> Graham has asked uh, about your skinny jeans. Do you I wear do not skinny wear jeans? skinny jeans. I wear okay. slims. Thank Slim. you very much. Um, I wear Levi 513s in the shop. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then when I go out, I wear whatever my wife tells me to. Uh -huh. um, I'd say if what I wear really is blue. Yeah. That's the, the color denim. I wear every day. Yeah, you know, I wear denim. It's tough. It's comfortable. It lasts. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. So, but no, Graham, I know you'd like to see me in skinny jeans, but no. <laughs> You guys seem really intimate. <laughs> <laughs> he knows you well. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Um, so if somebody really wanted to come and see your boot samples as well and talk to you about getting a new pair, it's really about visiting you. It's about visiting and me. Um, I'm 15 minutes south of Nashville mm -hmm. in, the, in a suburb town called Brentwood. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a website, www.musiccityleather.com. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook is facebook.com slash music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Instagram slash music city leather. Yeah. So um, you can contact me on all of that. Phone number 615-533-4882. Just right down there, yes. And how about your, so your, the name also, is it just because you're in Nashville or did you always um, love music? Um, I love music. Uh, music plays in my shop 24-7. Um, if I'm in here, we are a huge musical family. I am tone deaf. I can't play an instrument. I wish I could. I'd love to. Um, my son got all of that talent. Um, he's good. Playing That's guitar. Good. So music is very important to me. But what I wanted when I first started this is I didn't know if I could sustain myself making boots full time. Mm -hmm. So I came up with a name that was catching Music City. Everybody knows Music City. And the leather allowed me maybe a point, well, do I need to make guitar straps? Do I need uh, to make belts? Do? Uh, what do I need to do to bring this company into a profitable business mm -hmm. and bring it to fruition? And I felt like, you know, the boots would limit me. Mm -hmm. um, also, West Shugart does not lend itself really well to a boot making company. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Shugart's not really vulgar, but it's mm -hmm. Germanic. Right. So it's got the vulgarity to it, and it didn't really flow. So mm -hmm. that's why I went with Music City Leather. Very cool. And do you make belts? And I will well. make a belt. Um, I will make a wallet. Um, if somebody I asks. Mm -hmm. I think they're a different skill set. Mm -hmm. I can make a decent one, but I can't make one like Freddie Matera. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you know mm -hmm. Freddie Matera and his mm -hmm. belts and his guitar straps and his tooling and all, he's second to none. He's right. incredible. Right. I can't do that. Right. You know, I guess I could if I tried long enough and I focused it, but um, you know, I wouldn't say it's my forte, mm -hmm. but I can do it, and I they're they're above average and they're nice. You know, right. um, the belts I wear come from friends of mine. My mm -hmm. um, wallet comes from Pascal over at Hollywood Riff Rack. Mm -hmm. You know, so I um, it gives by me not making my own stuff on the boots, it allows me to wear other friends. Yeah. Um, wears. Yes. Because yeah. it's their art. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I agree. What about the hardware for the belts? Like, do they, did your friend make that as well? Or did um, you give it to the know, person? Actually, the belt buckle I got on right now, um, I got it for, as, for myself as a joke. It's a Music City, it's a Music City Leather Rodeo belt buckle. Oh, funny. I don't wear rodeo belt buckles, but I got it for myself just because the, I could. Um, I've yeah. got 
I've got some belt buckles from our competition out in um, Wichita Falls. But, you know, they let you pick your own belt buckle. Um, Owen Clark of Hair and Walk um, Leather, uh -huh. he makes my belts, and he collects vintage buckles, uh -huh. which are really cool. Um, so cool. he can match them up to it and that kind of stuff, too. Mm, that's cool. That is cool. Do you use hardware on your on your company? You know, I see it as bling. Um, yeah. I don't do rhinestones. Um, I will do a harness boot, which has hardware, has the ring on it. Yeah. Um, but no, I don't really do grommets or anything like that. Um, you know, I like to keep it more old school. Simple. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, simple. Yeah, ext but a little bit of pop. If you look yeah. at the boots I gravitate towards and the ones I make for myself, mm -hmm. they're conservative, yet a little bit of flash. Yes, yeah. You know, and so... And the color fun. combos are fun, I think. Yeah, color combos, you know. Um, I love the variegated thread I push people towards. I think it's awesome. So. Yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. Thank you for showing us around your shop. You're welcome. And showing us your boots. And I look forward to just following your journey on awesome. well, I appreciate Instagram. You yeah, no, thank you. All right, I'll let you go for today. But right, uh, if you. I have any questions, I'll reach out. Reach out. Thank you. All right. Peace. Bye.